to my channel. My name is Rhonda and I'm also known as the Sparkly One. Today I am going to show you this beautiful crocheted project and as you can tell I'm wearing a turtleneck underneath my jacket and it is so comfy and cozy. Now I am turning this mock turtleneck into a poncho and from the thumbnail I'm sure you could see that it is a poncho but you have the option of making it into this mock turtleneck. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some sweater weather. And so let me show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna unzip my jacket and here it is. So it's just this mock turtleneck and it's done in the classic granny pattern, the granny square pattern stitch. So let me take off my jacket so I can show you the rest of it. Okay, so I'm back. And this is the yarn and I'm still working on it because I'm gonna be making the poncho. So as you can see, if you, you can make it as long or as short as you want. This is eight rows right here, and you can just make it um, like this or a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. You can make it for kids. And so if you want to see the back, this is what it looks like. And of course, I can't see what that looks like, but I'm sure it looks pretty decent. And this is, like I said, this is only eight rows so far. I'm going to make it till it comes about you know, a couple inches past my forearm right here. And I think that would just make a really nice poncho. So if you um, want to see that, I have another poncho that I'm going to put on real quick. And I'm almost done with that one. And it's the same pattern, just in a different yarn. This yarn right here that I'm using is Yarn B, and it's the Pixie Twist. And it's so beautiful and soft. I really, really recommend this yarn because it's just really soft and lovely. So let me go ahead and put on my poncho. And I made these in three different colors. So I have the pink one here on the mannequin and then the teal colored one that I'm wearing. And then I also have a purple one. So I made these from three different types of yarns. So these, this yarn right here and this yarn right here are the Yarn B Sugar Wheel yarn. And the purple one right here is the Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton Yarn. And this one is in the acrylic. And this one's called Pixie Twist and it's so beautiful. And I actually wanted to make it a little bit longer, but I ran out of yarn and I went back to Hobby Lobby and they did not have it. So I just thought it would be cute the way it is. And it just hits right here at the elbow. And so you can wear a long sleeve shirt underneath it. And it makes it nice and um, easy to wear because you could just throw it over your sweater or your um, turtleneck or any long sleeve shirt. Or even in the summer, if you have a chilly night, you can just put it over your tank top. It's super cute. And anyway, so this yarn right here is a much thicker yarn. It is probably a size four weight yarn, but it may be a little bit on the bulkier side. I did use two skeins of yarn to make this this uh, turtleneck poncho. For the purple one, I also used two skeins of yarn. This is so soft and so beautiful. And this one right here has 335 yards or 306 meters. So if you want to make it with the cotton, you just need two of these to make this one. And this is kind of like a, a smaller um, poncho. So if you want to go up a size, I would say use a larger hook. Um, this one was made with a size I. Actually, all of these ponchos were made with the same size hook, and they're all size nine, or I believe it's an I. It's the same as a five and a half millimeter hook. So all three of these are made with the same size hook, but they turn out differently depending on your yarn. And this is called Spirit by Mandala Yarn. I think you're really gonna enjoy making them for gifts for the holiday. So I'm going to go ahead and show those to you right now. Here's the pink one, the purple one. Oh yeah. And so these ponchos are completely reversible. You don't, there's no right or wrong side to them. So that's really nice to know unless there's a variation in the yarn, like with the ones that are on different colors. Sometimes it'll end up to be where you change colors a little off. So you just switch it to the, the 
So you just switch it around and then you'll see how the pattern is evened out. So usually there's not really a wrong side or a right side. It just depends on the pattern that you want to see on the front and how the yarns integrate with each other. Okay, that's it. So if you want to learn how to make these cute ponchos, let's go ahead and get started. I'm inserting this because I've come this far in my project and this is the second ball of yarn that I'm adding to right now. And even before you get started, I just want to make sure that you have enough yarn. So I would suggest buying four skeins of this yarn because this only gave me one. This is one skein right here. And this is the second one. So I anticipate that it's not going to be long enough. So I really think that you're going to need more. With a thicker yarn, definitely buy more yarn. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Okay, so I have this beautiful yarn. Look, it has a heart in the middle. Isn't that pretty? And these are from Hobby Lobby, and they are by Yarn B, and it's the Sugar Wheel yarn, and it's called Pixie Twist. It is so beautiful. Of course, these are my favorite colors, but of course you want to pick your favorite colors, and any yarn will do. And this is, let's show you, um, 355 yards or 325 meters. And it's seven ounces. It says to use a size I crochet hook, which is the size that I will be using. And if you live in the UK, it's a size five. And if you use the metric system, it's a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. I have a little hint. Um, if you want the color that's in the middle, if you use two skeins, which you're going to need two skeins. So what I did is I picked this one to be my first one because the color up around the neck, I wanted more pink. When I get to the end of this skein, it's going to be gray. And then this only has a small uh, part of pink in the middle. So this gray right here matches this gray. So I will probably cut this portion off and then just continue with the gray. And then, because the green is my least favorite color, but I think it'll still be pretty. So you can also, you know, cut these into balls of yarn when the color changes. So I will probably be doing that. But I'm going to start out with this one and probably finish with this one. Okay, and as you can see, this has um, a gray center. So I want to start with my pink center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yarn and I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers like this. So I'm going to create my own little ball of yarn because I really don't think that I want this color up around my face. Let's see. We'll see how long it takes to get that out of here. It doesn't look like it's a whole lot, but of course it's in the middle. So I'm going to unwind this and I'll be right back. <laughs> Just as I said that, it changed color. So it's only a small amount of color anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this like right where it changes. And sometimes you get these kind of mottled, you know, stained look from the dyes that overlap onto the other color. But I'm just probably going to just save that for another project that I can use a small amount of yarn with. So I think I'm just going to cut this off too. Okay, so this gives me a good place to start. So all you're going to need to do is you're going to chain 70. Now if you want this a little bit um, tighter or looser, as you can see from the video, this is how it fit over my head. But if you want it a little bit looser, you can increase it by um, two stitches. So it's a multiple of two. So you might want to go to 74, 76, 78, 80, whatever it is, you can do that. But for now, but for now, I'm just going to do 70 for my pattern. So let me go ahead and chain 70. Then all you're going to do is you're going to yarn over. You're going to do a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So that's one, two, three, four. And I like to go into the back bumps. You can go into um, the area at the front. Whatever you want to do is fine. So if you're going to do like a regular, uh, the regular way, you're just going to go in from the front of the chain and you're going to go in and put it under two strands and then do your double crochet. But like I said, I'm going to do it in the back loop or the back bump. So either way, you can do it, whatever your preference is. 
And then you're going to just do double crochets all the way across until you get to the end. You should have 68 double crochets, including this chain four at the beginning. So we did chain 70, but you, don't, you should only have 68 of the double crochets. Okay, and then what you wanna do is just put it around your head like this and just see if that is big enough for you. And it's, remember, it's supposed to be like a turtleneck, so it should be a little bit snug, but it should be able to go over your head, of course. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to flip this around. So wait, let me put this back in. Okay, so you're at the end and you're gonna turn and you're going to straighten this piece out. So you're going to make sure you have your yarn at the top like this and you're laying it out flat so it's all straight. And then you're going to put your hook into the top of that chain four and you're going to join it with a slip stitch. And this piece goes to the bottom. Now at this point you can weave in your end right here so it connects because it's split open or you can wait till the end if you want. So whatever you want to do, just maybe you should just do it and get it out of the way. So maybe I should do that so you can see what it looks like. Um, okay, so all I'm going to do is get my yarn needle and you're going to take this end, just like that. Okay, then you're going to Make sure this, this piece doesn't come out. Okay. Then you're going to go right here at the bottom of this chain four. Just go right in between there. And you're just going to join it together. So you can weave it right up this stitch right here. Make sure you don't snag anything. Okay, and you will have it looking like it's coming out like a three-dimensional. Okay, just like that. So that's where it joins. Let me put this to the back. And then, of course, you're going to weave that in. But this is what it should look like, something like that. Yours might be a little neater than mine. Mine's not that neat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out and put that aside and then I'll, I'll finish that later, but you can do that if you want right now. Okay. But at least it's together and you can get an idea of what we're doing. Okay. So, okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start our, um, front back front and back post double crochets. So you're going to want to chain three. Then you're going to yarn over and we're going to assume that this one right here where we did that um, sewing in is your front post because it's kind of coming out a bit compared to the rest of them. And we're always going to assume that this is our front post. Okay. Your chain three always count, counts as your front post because this one right here where we connected should be a front post. And then next to that stitch right here is your next double crochet. So we're going to front post double crochet under that one. And then we're going to back post under the next two. So one, two, whoops, came unwound, two. And this is going to get all bulky and everything, so it's going to be perfectly fine. This is the back of the neck anyway, so you won't even notice it. And then you're going to do two, two front posts and two back posts. So you're going to alternate. So right here, these are your two, your first two, two front, two back, two front. And just continue that all the way around and then let me just show you real quick too. If you don't know how to do a front post or a back post, all you're going to do is yarn over. You're going to go from the back in between these little leg things here, and you're going to push it over the double crochet stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and pull through just like you do a double crochet. You're going to do two in a row, just like that. 
And then for the front ones, you're going to yarn over and you're going to go in between. You're going from the front to the back and you're going to grab this leg just like that. And you're going to yarn over and that's your front post. So just do two each and you're going to have 68 and then I'll see you at the beginning of this round. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning. And as you can see, this is where we did our chain stitch. And so that is our beginning. These were considered a front post double crochet. So we ended on, let me show you this, a back post. So all we need to do is connect these two. And so you're going to go at the top of this chain right here and you're going to insert your hook over two strands yarn over pull through and do a slip stitch so that joins everything perfectly now this is going to be stretchy a little bit so it will fit over your head just fine so all we're going to do is repeat that same pattern we're going to do chain three yarn over and these are considered a front post so you don't have to actually go around this one, but you're going to go to the next one. And that's your front post double crochet. So again, this counts as your front post. Then we're going to go to the next um, back post and you're going to do around these back posts. You're going to do two in a row. And then you're just going to continue going around the front post and the back post as you see on the front. It's right here. Then you're going to go on the back post and you're going to go all the way around and now you're going to repeat the same pattern. Okay, so you're going to have to do this. Um, this is one row and that was two. This is row three. So we want eight rows. So make sure that you have eight. You can have nine, ten, whatever you want. However high you want this, uh, you can make it. So you can stop here if you want or you can keep going until it's about... I'm going to say about four inches. So once I get to that um, height, then I'm going to come back with eight rows and I'll show you the next step. You're going to chain one and in the next stitch right here, you're going to put two stitches. And in the next one, you're going to put one. The next one, you're going to put two. So the first one, you chain one. Then you put two, one, two, one, two, one, and you do that all the way around. And just to clarify, each stitch is, you know, one stitch. These are all single stitches. So that's where you're going to put it in, right there at the top. So that goes two. This one is one. This one is two. And then you're just going to do that all the way around until you get to the beginning and then I'll show you how to join it and just keep going. Okay, so I just got to the end and I my last one has two stitches in it and this was my single crochet right here. So you just want to ignore my broken nail. You just want to you want to join at the top of this chain one at the beginning there with a slip stitch. Just like that. Okay. Okay, so at this point, you're going to chain three. Then you're going to half double crochet in the in all of the stitches around. So you're chaining three, yarning over, going into that first space with a half double crochet. Then you're going to half double crochet in every stitch around like that and then I'll meet you when you get to the beginning of this chain three now that you're at the end you're going to slip stitch in this third chain at the top just like that then you're going to chain three and you're going to work three double crochets in your first stitch. So you have actually two that you have to put in here because the chain three counts as your first double crochet. 
you're going to yarn over, you're going to skip two, go into the top of this double crochet, the third one, and you're going to put three double crochets in here. And you're just going to repeat that all the way around. Yarn over, skip two, go into the third one with three double crochets. So we're making that cute little granny square looking pattern of the three in a row. Then you're going to skip two and go all the way around until you get to the beginning and then I'll meet you once we get back to this point right here. So if you see this purple, it's because I did not film this portion. So I had you start these clusters right here and I didn't show how to finish it. So this is why I'm inserting this in a different um, yarn. So this is what yours should look like at this point. And one thing I do want to point out is that in this row, you have your single crochets in this row and your half double crochets in this row. So you should have either 103 or 104 of those stitches. And if either one is fine, it doesn't really matter if you are one stitch off or not, but it's either 103 or 104. So whichever one you come out with, remember it's just totally fine and that we can achieve our goal. So once you have, um, as you can see here, okay, so I think, I'm pretty sure this one has 104 stitches. So I basically have one extra stitch. So if you have 103, I think that would work out better. Now don't hold me to that because yours might be a little different, but it should all be good. I don't think I would worry too much if you have one less stitch um, or one too many like I do. So anyway, when you get to your last cluster, you're going to have right here, this should be number 34. So if you count all the way around, you should have 34. And then all you're going to do is join to the top of the chain three on that first one and slip stitch. And as you can see, I have three stitches in here and they all should have two. So I apparently have one extra one, but that's okay. We can get through this and we are moving on to row 12. So chain three and you're always going to be turning and then you're going to put into this space two double crochets because your chain three counts as your first one. And then you're going to chain two and do three more in that same space. So this is where we're starting where the um, point is, or as I refer to it as the V, <laughs> because it's an upside down V. And so this is the point. And then you're just going to continue doing your three double crochet clusters. And you should have a total of, um, how many should you have? Well, that's in the pink video, so I will just let you move on to the pink video for now. Okay, so I want you to take a look here. So we have two in this one. So this space, we're going to count the spaces, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And in this eighteenth space right here, you're going to put a cluster of two together, okay? So just like you did at the beginning, this is the front V, and so you need to put six total with a two chains in between, just like that. And then go ahead and finish around to this other section, and then we will join, okay? So we're getting there. So just keep working all the way around. Now you can go back to your one cluster of three until you get back to the beginning. So I'm back to the beginning with this, uh, the V in the middle. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to, see, we're gonna, <laughs> uh, I can't even talk. We're going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three. Okay, so let's just take a look at this real quick. So we have these two points, one on either side, and I know it looks a little weird here, but you can tell that it's got that little V. So we're just kind of making a collar for now. Now we'll be making the poncho portion. So this is just gonna get bigger and bigger, but slip this over your head, see if you like the way it looks as a collar, make sure it's all nice and even. And you should have 18 
uh, spaces. Okay, so let me just double check this. Let me just show you. I want to make sure you have the proper count of these stitches on each side. So if you look at this V portion, and you're going to count this as one on this side, and we'll count that for the other side. So if you count around, you'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, until you get to this point right here. So you have eighteen on this side, and then go ahead and make sure you have eighteen on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that works out perfectly. So if yours is at, at that point right now, this is easy. So from here on out, it's going to be super simple. And let me just show you what we're going to do. The hard part is over. Okay. So you're on this side, this is how you ended. You're going to chain three. This is gonna be for all of your rows from now on. You're gonna flip it around and you're gonna work back in this direction. So we're not gonna fill in that point yet. So you're just going to do three clusters and all of the stitches until you get to the point of the halfway point on the other side. So don't worry about this one right now. This is gonna kind of look funny and we're gonna, I'll show you once we get to the other point. You're getting to the center right about now. Okay, now once you're at this point, you're going to put that two clusters of three with a chain two in between, just like you did before. So you have three, one, two, and then three in the same space, in that chain two space. So as you can see, you're making your increase only in this portion and this portion over here. So I'll show you how to join when we get to the beginning and then you're on your own from here on out. So now we're coming to this point of the V and so you're going to put that, this is where my yarn's changing as you can tell. You're going to put the three, chain two, and three double crochets in that chain two space. And then here is where you're going to join. So you're going to join at the top of that chain three, just like that. And then you're going to chain three. And this is what you're going to be doing for all of the rows from now on. You're just going to keep going till you have as many rows as you want. I'll show you how many rows I have um, at one point after I get down, you know, probably about 20 rows. And I'll show you what that looks like. So just keep going. But when you turn your work, remember, you're going to go into that same space underneath that chain three. And at this point, you get to work this area in the center one more time. And that's because we keep turning our work. So it's gonna end up in a different spot every time. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you don't end up in the same space every time. And just keep going around. And I'll see you when I see ya. So enjoy crocheting and I'm so glad you joined me. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm gonna stop right here because I wanna show you what eight rows looks like. Now eight rows are the granny stitch ones that I'm talking about. You can stop right here and make this uh, mock turtleneck and leave it at that. It'd be perfect. But if you want to continue to make the poncho, then you're going to have to just keep going until you have X amount of rows. I don't know what that is yet, but I will tell you because I haven't finished it yet. And I need to know how many rows I'm going to do. I'm assuming if this is eight rows that we're probably going to need about 50 rows. I don't know, but I'm just guessing. So I'll come back and I'll tell you and I'll put it at the bottom of the screen so that you know exactly how many rows to do. And that's if you're using this yarn. And it is a, it's a size four weight yarn, I believe. But I'm gonna show you one real quick that is a size three weight yarn or a little bit thinner than this four. It probably says a four, but it's thinner. Um, so I'm gonna put that on and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I have the poncho on. This is made with mandala yarn. And this is in the color Spirit. And it's so pretty, I love this. 
and it's just very colorful and very bright and vivid <laughs> and vivid bright and vivid so this has about 24 rows but this is a thinner yarn than the pink one so if you want to leave it at that with 24 um, rows, this is still really cute. And I'm just gonna show you what it looks like in the back. I'm still attached and I haven't weaved in any of my ends yet. So just so you know. So as you can tell, it's a little bit small at this point. I think this would be great for a younger teenager or a small adult. You can do whatever length you want. Like so let's go ahead and continue the video. And when you're done, I'm gonna come back, or when I'm done, when I'm done, I'm gonna come back and I'll show you what it looks like a little bit bigger. So I know this is really fun for you guys. Keep going. I have finished 12 and a half rows. So as you can see here, this is only a half of a row that I finished and it ended right here. So I am going to join a new color. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew how to join the new color. So you take your other ball of yarn and if you decide that you don't want to start, like say this has a new color, which will be right here, you can uh, cut that one off, you know, unwind it, cut it off, and then you can use um, the next color. So this color actually blends better with this color, but I gotta start somewhere, right? So I'm just gonna use the new color, which is pink. But what I need to do is get this last stitch right here to be the color that I'm changing to. So I'm just gonna back up to the last yarn over. Whoops, just like that. And then I'm going to add the new color right here. So that means that I'll have that color already blended in to go to the next one. So just put these loose strands behind you and start your next group of three. Just do one double crochet. And then just take this end here and snug it up. And then just do, you know, your normal three in that one space. And what this is gonna leave you with are these two loose tails over here. So you're gonna take these tails and you're just gonna tie them together, just like that. Just lightly, just twist them like that. And just leave them there because what you can do is you can weave these in. You'll weave the pink one into the pink section and you'll weave the gray one into the gray section. So when you get around to the other end, you know, when you get around to this beginning, <laughs> when you get around to the beginning of this row, when you come back here, just you can weave these in any time. So what I suggest is probably just cutting this long one to the length of the pink one. And then you can just weave, the, like I said, the gray one into the gray and the pink one into the pink. And that's all you do and then just keep on crocheting okay so i went to the store so i could get more of this yarn in pixie twist but they didn't have any so i was kind of bummed that i couldn't make this any bigger but that's okay because i think it's going to turn out so cute so all i'm going to do is weave in all of my loose ends and then i'll show you what this looks like on but look how beautiful these colors are i'm very excited so i can't wait to show it to you 